Hello and welcome to the After the Sermon podcast. This is a Bethany Church podcast where every week we get together and discuss the sermon that is preached. And this Sunday is June 27th, I believe. Mm-hmm. Correct? I'm good. I'm good at numbers. Uh, my name is Joe and I'm with joined by Tammy DeLau. Awesome to be back. And also Pastor Thad. And Pastor sure. Thad, this week we are talking about prayer. We're continuing the series, the summer series of Sermon on the Mount. And you want to just dive into it? And I mean, this is going to be a good conversation, I think. Yeah, I think so, because my goodness, uh, how important is prayer? And then here we have Jesus teaching us about prayer. And and we're going to have this week and next week. And so I think it's probably uh, important to kind of point out that um, the the way I'm kind of dividing these weeks up is I want to kind of look at the approach to prayer, which will be this week. Uh, how, how should we think about prayer? How should we look at prayer as we go into it? And then I think next week we'll come into more as we actually look at the Lord's Prayer, or really the disciples' prayer of, you know, how, how should we think about our appeals? How should we think about what we're praying? So mm-hmm. how do we think about prayer? How do we go into this? How do we desire this? And then let's say, okay, wh- you know, what should gauge, what should filter our prayer? in our prayer life. Uh, Cause I'll say this, the Lord's prayer is one of my favorite prayers. I, I pray it all the time. Like I, I literally on my prayer, in my prayer journal, I have, when I'm going through my prayer list, I have the Lord's prayer on there. Mm-hmm. So I'm praying the Lord's prayer because really, and you expect no less from Jesus, it's really kind of the perfect model of prayer. Uh, he covers everything that you would need to cover in there really. And so I just love it. And I'm excited about next <laughs> week, but this week I wanna talk about uh, the approach to prayer, how we think about prayer. And I, I hope it's gonna be very helpful for lots of people. And my hope is that there's just at least a nugget gleaned from uh, what we talk about today that could maybe really help somebody in their prayer mm-hmm. life. So as we're talking about the approach to prayer, I really want to focus on this idea of a connection with God, right? Because that's what prayer is, you know, connecting with God, building that relationship, uh, all the while having confidence in God. And then sometimes understanding, um, you know, we need a heightened connection with God. Maybe there's something going on or maybe we're struggling and, uh, and fasting comes into mm. that. And yeah. so we're just going to really kind of stop down. We're going to talk about the text, but I think what would be really interesting too is as we share about our own personal experiences with um, prayer, uh, our own personal experiences with fasting, how that might help some people. Uh, and so, yeah, look into yeah. that. So we're going to be here, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, as we're just kind of jumping in there, Jesus starts off and says, listen, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues, the street corners, that they can be seen by others. And uh, Jesus says, truly, uh, they've received their rewards. Um, Mm. Now, what's kind of interesting about this, and we'll just touch on this before again, I want to say kind of heavy application oriented. Um, You know, there's nothing wrong with standing and praying. Mm -hmm. In the scripture, we see people standing, we see them kneeling, we see them prostrate, right? There's nothing inherently wrong with those uh, prayer requests. Um, There's nothing wrong with being in the synagogue or being in your church or whatever you want to say. It's, you know, praying in any one of those positions, right? There's nothing inherently wrong with that. But we get a clue here about the hypocrisy and what's happening here where it says street corners there in uh, verse 5. Because it's a different word than the word for street he used just a few verses earlier. A few verses earlier, he was talking about giving to the needy in narrow streets. In this case, the word he uses Mm. is for um, wide streets or the widest part of the street. In other words, where everyone is. It's interesting. Yeah. And so he's like, okay, so you guys are making it a point here that when you're praying and you're standing in public, and they would have times of prayer during the day, which was, again, no big deal. But you guys are all, you're hypocrites. You're always trying to stand in the widest part of the street. What's also interesting is they would often mm-hmm. do this on the second, fifth day of the week, to which they would say that's the, the days that, you know, Moses went up on the mountain. But it also happened to be the market days when all the people would be coming into the town. So you guys are hypocrites, right? You're, you're wanting to stand in front of people. Yeah. You're, th- these are the days when everybody's going to be flooding the town. So it's very convenient for you to be out there in this widest part of the street, you know, praying and, and all of that mm-hmm. and being a hypocrite because you're really looking for the self-aggrandizing action of prayer where you're drawing attention to yourself. And this strikes me because it also, and I want to be careful I say this, it, it also kind of seems political. 
because you're out there almost like a politician saying, look at me. <laughs> Think about some of these guys maybe wanting to attract followers to be known, things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's almost even political in nature. I mean, you're, you're trying to do this for what you're going to look like. You're trying to do mm-hmm. this for completely uh, the wrong motive. And so uh, these guys are just being hypocritical. Now, we don't, have to, we don't often, right, we don't have people in, in uh, our time necessarily doing things like that. I mean, it's, it's there. Yeah. I mean, you know? nobody's getting a billboard and being yeah. like, look at me pray. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, well, if anything, I think the converse might be true. You, we're embarrassed to pray. We don't yeah. want people to think we're one of those. You yeah, know? absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think what it does, sh- but I, I think another way that we can look at this, though, is we can get overly consumed with what people think about us when we pray, and mm-hmm. it takes our focus off of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's more true in our culture is uh, we would be terrified to pay, pray in public or in our small group or something like that. And so we're so worried about how we're looking that we're forgetting to really connect when we are publicly praying. So so for both reasons, pride is the culprit. Either I'm prideful yeah. praying in the street in Jesus' times or I'm prideful yeah. not wanting to pray in, pe- in front of people. Absolutely. Okay. That's a great, that's a great point. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, again, it just, it has to do with you. You're not, and if you're focusing on you, who are you not focusing yeah, on, right? Exactly. You're not focusing mm-hmm. on that real connection with God. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, when you're talking about approach, the approach can't be worried about you and what others, others think about you and things like that. The approach needs to be more on connecting with God. So in verse six yeah. there, it says, but when you pray, mm-hmm. go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who is in secret will reward you. Um, so again, this idea of a room with no windows, a, a door that's able to shut, a place to be alone, this really denotes this idea of fostering a relationship, fostering mm-hmm. a connection. You're wanting to be mm-hmm. alone with Jesus Christ. And when I think about this in this mm-hmm. prayer time, I, I think about Jesus um, in John fifteen fourteen, where he's talking about abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Mm-hmm. There's this idea, there's this connection, there's this intimacy uh, that should be desired by the Christian in prayer and and with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think it it goes along the same lines of religion versus relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a real like push in like at least my generation for we don't want religion, we want relationship. I have a relationship with Jesus. And I mean, this is a huge part of it. Prayer is a huge part of it. And so, he's, and so it's just this beautiful idea here. And this is really, it seems so simple, but I think it's so deep with this idea of don't worry about what you're saying. Don't worry about what other, others think, but strive to focus on the connection. Mm-hmm. And then Jesus has also given us clear insight that there needs to be this connection beyond just the public. It also needs, it needs to be private, right? Beyond, mm-hmm. beyond just that, but this private. So when you pray, you know, go in, and again, there's nothing wrong with praying in public or standing or kneeling or mm-hmm. and praying in church. Um, but there needs to be this time where there's that intimate connection where you're together yeah. uh, with with Jesus. Um, so in talking about the goal and, the, and, and just, it, it says your father will reward you in secret. And, and I think, and again, we'll talk about several different kinds of rewards. But the connection with God, the relationship with God, having mm. God, that is the first and ultimate Absolutely. reward. Mm-hmm. Right? You just, you can't get away from this, um, this moment. And, and I think about Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Mm-hmm. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. Wow, Amen. do we need that in life. Yeah, and so I'm thinking time. of, yeah, I'm thinking about fostering this connection. I'm getting along with Jesus. And as I connect in him, as I abide in him, mm. you know, I will have the peace of God because notice here it says, guard your hearts and minds in Christ mm. Jesus, mm. abiding in him. Yeah. And so it's just this beautiful connection. The, the, the reward is the relationship itself, but in the midst of that relationship, you'll mm. have peace. Yeah. You'll have kindness. You'll, you'll have that connection as you're Amen. abiding. And I think, again, that has to be the approach The prayer is, before anything, God, I am seeking a connection with you. And as I abide in you, then I'll begin to experience even more rewards. But only those rewards come when I'm in you. Yeah. Right? 
And I love how it says in everything. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every little thing. That's just, it's, it's, we do, we take everything to God in prayer. It's, it's interesting. I'm wondering what this Tammy's quote is. Is that a Tammy DeLau quote? So Tammy, yeah. Or, well, well Tammy, it, Tammy has, uh, <laughs> Well, I, I tell you, I'll let Tammy share the story about she she she's giving me some quotes and she's giving me quotes that are so good I can't figure out which one I want to use. Oh, there's too there's too much wisdom. Oh. There's, yeah. Yeah. No, um, we have a, a dear friend, um, Andy and I were Campus Crusade kids, and our Crusade director um, became a dear friend over time. Those years, twelve years ceases to be nothing as as you age. And um, John was a Crusade director, went to seminary, and then had a church in Janesville. He passed away several years ago, but his family has given me access to all his manuscripts that he um, that he preached on. And so he was the kind of pastor who would take a book and, and go through it, and Matthew is one that he happened to do that for. So um, so as to come here and have information, and just to, as I do like to study and look at the scriptures that we're talking about before we come on, so it's thoughtful and, and prayerful and not just off the cuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I found some great quotes um, just talking about rewards and there's some great quotes anyway, just shared a few of them with, with Pastor Thad. So, Yeah, and they were so mm-hmm. good that I'm like, I'm sitting struggling. I, can't, I don't know mm-hmm. which one. Mm-hmm. We'll find out Sunday. Yeah, yeah, you'll find out <laughs> Sunday. But it's just, it's just so good. And so um, one of the things I think I, I just want to stress with, with people who are getting worried about this prayer time and how do I, mm-hmm. how should I think about this? How should I focus mm-hmm. on this? I just can't stress enough. Uh, it, it has to do with your heart, your motive, and just the desire to actually connect with God. Mm-hmm. But before you think about what you get, mm-hmm. connect with God. Because when you're in that connection, when you're abiding in the vine, everything else is going to take care of that. You're going to have peace, and, mm-hmm. and you can move on from there with, with, with mm-hmm. what you're seeking. Um, mm-hmm. Again, with, with answered prayer, it's a part of it, um, of course. Um, and, and so in verse 7, it talks about abiding in me, words abiding in you. Ask whatever you wish will be done for you. Because by this, my Father's glorified that you'll bear much fruit. So, so yeah, you, you know, there'll be, there'll be answered prayer um, mm-hmm. and what's happening there. Um, and then I'd also say this too. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, Jesus says this, and this is one of my favorite verses. Or, yeah, it says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy mm-hmm. laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest. And I love this part, rest for your souls. Mm-hmm. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Because, you know, mm. we, we can find rest physically, take a nap, whatever, that, that kind of stuff. But that yeah. rest for your soul, mm-hmm. that's a Jesus thing. That's a God thing. Yeah. And so, again, you're getting this connection, and the reward is in and of itself, where you go and recharge, and you have this connection uh, with Jesus Christ, this abiding quality mm-hmm. so for me i can it's 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 a spiritual soulful thing but i can even it's it's but, it, but it's so powerful that it's it's almost like physical mm-hmm. and i will do i will i will call you know i will um i guess you call it a, i call it a micro sabbatical but when i start to feel drained spiritually um i know it i feel it mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm dry mm-hmm and I need to get with my Savior. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll come to the office and I'll say, Michelle, unless it's an emergency, I'm with Jesus this morning or a certain afternoon or maybe I'll leave early or whatever. And what I do there is I am going to be with Jesus because I, I recognize that I can't make big decisions. I, I, I can't do certain things without being fully abiding in him and having that connection and being filled up. And, you know, for the Christian, and I remember, um, I think it was Tyler, one of our elders, I was talking about this one day. Imagine yourself uh, by the Jordan River, right? A little bit of an arid region, but right there by the river, it's very green, it's very lush, and the river is flowing. Christians should always be by the river. They should always be Mm. connected to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, there'll be times when the the river floods, and, and you just, man, you're so full of the spirit and God is so with you. It's just amazing. And just mm-hmm. everywhere is great. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a high point, right? Um, but the, the river should never be in drought, mm-hmm. right? When mm-hmm. you're a Christian, that, that connection with Jesus. And so when I start to see my connection with Jesus because of my own fault or, 
lack of attention and the river is becoming dry, uh, I, I need to get back and connect with him and let the river flow. And it's awesome when it's a flood season, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but for the Christian, we should always make sure that the river is strong. Yeah. and that the area is green and that our souls are refreshed mm -hmm. and we need this and it's in Jesus and that connection. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious, how have you guys sent some of these things in your life and what actions have you taken to um, make sure the, the river is strong, to make sure that your, the presence is, is with you and you've, you're connecting with God or what happens when you realize that it's not there? You know, just, yeah, that would be my thoughts. Go for it, yeah, yeah, yeah. you start. Um, man, when I'm feeling that heaviness in my soul of just like worn out, I like, I mean, every morning I try to at least be alone with the Lord in some sort of capacity and just let music play and just, I mean, the Psalms are awesome to just mm -hmm. read and let them wash over you. You know, as a deer pants, I want to pant for you, Lord, and refresh me. It's just simple prayers like that, Lord. It's like, refresh me, Lord. And also evangelism. Like when you start telling people about Jesus, I feel like, man, that, that, I don't know, it does something to your spirit or soul i don't know mm -hmm. but that, it's always a refreshing thing to go and tell somebody about jesus and and speak to them uh truth in my opinion but i i don't know that's that's the two ways that i find um so i think a lot of people we talk about prayer and they're like well what does that look like and and where do you do that and i know mm -hmm. there isn't um a pat answer and that's going to look different for us but when you are praying is there a certain place in your home you like to do that is i mean i know pray yeah. without ceasing is literal but um so i'm just curious if if we share what our prayer closets quote unquote look like if that would help some of those who aren't even sure how to begin where's a place in my yeah, like, house like, well, yeah, like what is it what does that look like so so for me i'll maybe that, that sure. will help so one of the things that i like to do when when i'm at home we have a a wall of our our baby babies when they were three months old mm -hmm. and so um obviously i'm a mom and a grandma so i you know part of my prayer time is lifting up my family in prayer so as i'm praying i see that three-month-old megan and now there is a Cullen, and there are three children attached mm. to her. And I pray for that baby and all that are hers. And I go around, you know, my seven mm. children. And so that's something that I do just because you hear people say, well, it's boring. I, I fall asleep. My mind wanders. And so that's something, does that make sense? That helps me yeah. to stay. Or um, when I'm praying with women or, or in our grow group, obviously we care about everybody's prayer requests. But when you've got 14 prayer requests, it can feel so, so overwhelming, you know, to, to pray that way. And so one of the little tricks that I do with people is I have everyone write their request out on a card and mm -hmm. ask for them to write a specific re request, not Bertha's Bunyan. We, I mean, we love your Aunt Bertha, but we want to know what's going on in your heart. And yeah. then to also give an attribute of the Lord that they're seeing. So not only as we're, <clears throat> excuse me as we're, you know, beseeching the Lord for our brothers and sisters, we're also praising the Lord that they saw his faithfulness this week. And so I take those cards and I've got like a little file in, in my office. So I'll grab those and pray for them. Cool. Or um, nobody uses mine in Andy's bathroom, but Andy and I typically, and so I will put their names and kind of flip the card. Andy's the most uncurious guy that way so women's prayer requests are not being looked at but <laughs> but then when I'm in the restroom I, I see their name and have their requests and so those are just little tricks that I do to mm. help me and I just I just wonder if some people prayer is just so ambiguous and they don't know how to do that I um, have a swing or like in our yard it's and so I love to lay on that swing and and look up at the clouds and just see God's beautiful creation and that's a, a time where I'm really alone with the Lord so does that help I mean I just wonder if yeah. we kind of share what that looks like for us as opposed yeah. to I pray because I think people don't know <laughs> how to pray you know so yeah do you have any tricks like that that help you stay grounded focused um connect you yeah I mean just a prayer list I mean okay. in my notes on my phone okay. I'll usually jot them down and we have a grow group thread where people are um 
Mm-hmm. People are putting prayer requests out on there, and I'll just put them in my prayer list, and I just kind of go through my prayer list mm-hmm. um, in the morning, and that's kind of. I also do this um, where I pray the scriptures for different. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a, a thing long ago, like fifteen, 15 years ago, I found this. Uh, what do you call that? Where it's like it's fellowship, and the F means fear the Lord. E, you know, acrostic. Yeah. So I kind of pray, pray through that list. And, you know, L is love. Lord, show me your love. Show me how much you love me. The same love that the Father has for Jesus. Show me that you love me that much and help me to love you. And so it's just simple prayers like that. But if you pray those daily, you will notice uh, a total difference in your own life where if you're praying for the joy of the lord or Mm -hmm. for patience or for kindness and Mm -hmm. those types of things will they will flow Mm -hmm. out of you it's amazing i like that so my prayer closet is either my office here or my office at home or when i can get out by myself in nature Mm -hmm. Uh, that becomes another really good um moment for me where i can be alone and just really enjoy that and it's i mean it's been that way since i was a very young christian uh, growing up where I did, we had some land. And so I had a few places where I'd love to just go and sit and just pray mm-hmm. and praise and mm-hmm. uh, all of that and practice his presence there. So um, those are kind of some places that I like to, to, to get away. Uh, and some of the things you guys are talking about too, I think are also very good when, you, when you're talking about um, as you're coming in, what helps you connect with God. Because um, one of the things Jesus says here is as you're coming in with this idea of connection, keep in mind that you can't manipulate God. Mm-hmm. Right. right. So he says here, and when you pray, in verse 7, don't heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Um, so, uh, you know, when you go into prayer, mm-hmm. it's, it's not necessarily the length of your prayer, although there's nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jesus prayed all night. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. He was even repetitive in the sense that he would come back when he was praying in uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, but the length of prayer itself is not going to help you. The liturg- liturgical quality of your prayer, if you're using big words or if you have a, 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 you know, a, a prayer guide, you know, it's not just that. Um, and I want to be careful I say this. It's, it's also not the static, charismatic tone of your prayer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you don't hype yourself into a frenzy <laughs> in prayer thinking that, well, if I, if I act like what I've seen someone else do, Mm-hmm. Then I if will. I'm as enthusiastic yeah. as Pastor Thad. Yeah. The Lord will hear. Yeah, me he'll hear sure. me. Raise my right? <laughs> You know yeah. that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. If I'm just louder, you know. Yeah. That, that, um, you know. So, but but I do think I do think though it is um, okay for us. And you guys have already started to hit on it to have things that help us to focus or concentrate. Yeah. Uh, help help us just, like you know. I light a candle when I when mm-hmm. I pray. Uh, I journal. I have a prayer list. Uh, I have a kneeler that I will use. Mm-hmm. Not every time but mm-hmm. a lot of the times uh someone had made me this little wooden cross for for prayer and um so i have this little wooden uh cross that i'll have with my journal and that i'll often hold that and i'll say this about the kneeler uh it, it's not the high church idea but i'll be honest you know sometimes when you're you're praying you can lose focus but i find even though the kneeler has a comfortable um cushion. matting cushion mm-hmm. on it it's still uncomfortable being on your knees in prayer. It is. So it's an act of submission, but it's also a focus point that keeps me grounded. Yeah. And as I'm praying, I'm going through my list, I'm holding that cross. It's it's, it's another mm-hmm. focus point. The The candle is this recognition of, uh, you know, kind of symbolic of the Holy Spirit being there. Mm-hmm. And so it's okay to utilize these things. And you were talking about pictures and, mm-hmm. and how to use the family and you had the acrostic. Mm-hmm. It's, um, it's totally okay to use those because those are helping you, driving you yeah. into your connection and your focus. But them in and of itself uh, isn't mm-hmm. a, a magic abracadabra, yeah. you know, open sesame, God give me, you know, mm-hmm. what I want or, or any of that kind of stuff. Although mm-hmm. it can be very, very helpful. And if some of you are using practices from things you've learned as a kid or, yeah. or things you've, you've learned to help, then by all means use those. But the priority is they're helping you stay connected, yeah. uh, helping you abide in Christ. Yeah, and I'll even get up and pace back and forth in my room sometimes just to help keep the blood flowing and mm-hmm. keep me focused on what I'm praying for. Do you find yourself praying in your head or with an audible voice? Uh, both, I mean. Okay. It, it's, uh, audible voice it, more, more than 
in my head because it just I don't know it just mm-hmm. helps me focus more I mm-hmm. suppose yeah, I think Tammy was mentioning that was something that helps her too is is praying audibly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, there's a reason my desk is the way it is <laughs> <'Cause> otherwise <laughs> they all think I'm talking to myself <laughs> <laughs> you pretend you're on a FaceTime yeah, call all go. the time <laughs> oh, I mean obviously I do in my head also but that helps to keep me I um, I don't know if it's just part of, of being female that we mm. are, are have so many com- mm. compartments and we can be there at all times and so it helps to keep yeah. me focused if I'm yeah I mean if I'm speaking. walking if I'm walking through Walmart I'm not praying out loud <laughs> <laughs> typically right <laughs> yeah I've, I've been uh, driving in my car and thinking you know I wonder if <laughs> am I talking to the little uh, <laughs> GPS person I, navigator you lift up uh, your phone you guys, <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited because now we can do that we can sing and praise out loud and at the stop sign for all people know we've got a bluetooth going on in our yeah. car and we're having a phone conversation yeah, exactly. so we, we are free yeah, to we are, praise we are, con- and we are to- connected <laughs> with God right <laughs> we are. Um, so. amen yeah that's a good that's a good thing mm-hmm. um, Joe how are we doing on time uh, we have uh, five minutes left. five minutes okay so probably probably need to Keep going here. Um, I think it's really great, though, in verse 80 says, you know, don't be like that. Don't do all these things because your father knows what you need him before you ask. The one thing I want to say about that uh, just at this moment is um, be confident in God when you connect with him. Mm -hmm. He's got you. Yeah, Mm -hmm. amen. You know, go in there, not worried about all this stuff. Just know that he's dad. Just, just, I mean, yes, he is the creator of the universe and all of this, but he wants you to be there. He knows what you need before you ask. You can't mess it up. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, some people are like, I don't know, what if I pray wrong about this? You know, um, mm-hmm. you, you just, you can't mess up um, and then ask the Spirit. Uh, ask the Spirit to pray for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think these things are very important. Um, and, and I just want to, again, relay. The, fo- the, the, the point, the approach is connecting. Yeah. And you can't mess it up. And so when you go in, be confident that he hears you. Be confident that he's going to um, be working mm-hmm. in this uh, time with you. Yeah. And it can be a powerful experience. So mm-hmm. have that confidence mm-hmm. that he knows. Yeah, And I think it's, you mentioned just listening to the Holy Spirit. Like have a time where you're not praying mm-hmm. and just listening. Because I remember Debbie Baxley told the story of um her daughter hannah was one night couldn't sleep because she was worried about her friend and she went to hannah and she said well maybe the holy spirit is asking you to pray for her so let's pray for her so they prayed for her and the next day they found out that she needed that prayer in that moment at that Mm -hmm. time and so i think there is uh you've got to be sensitive to the holy spirit you've got to make room for not only talking to him but allow him to talk to you Mm -hmm. at the same time awesome gonna agree more Mm -hmm. last thing because i know we're almost out of time um when we're talking about connection sometimes our connection feels a little strained you know, honestly, it does. Or maybe we're going through a hard period. And in the sermon, I'll talk more about when or sometimes we need that a heightened connection or the connection doesn't feel as strong. And then maybe we do bring fasting into that because mm-hmm. um, there's something unique about fasting with prayer. It is unique as it involves the totality of mankind, the soul and the body of a man in a dependent, intimate relationship with his creator, heightening his, heightening his experience with God, hearkening back to Eden, it is an altogether unique and powerful experience because when we come into this dynamic where we are praying, it's not only soulful, but it's physical. It's saying, God, you are so important. I'm bringing my whole body uh, yeah. into this experience and my focus on you. I'm even denying myself food. And so I, I think yeah. it's just, a, uh, David used the whole peanut butter and jelly illustration, <laughs> which I think was so good. Uh, you know, I think it was Daniel series when we talked about this last. Um, it just it heightens mm-hmm. the peanut butter and the jelly by putting them together. And so I think fasting is a way for us to heighten that experience of of, of prayer and to even have some some breakthrough. And and it's and even in response to some things God may be doing in our life. And we'll talk more about that later. But I just mm-hmm. I wanted to get out there that even in fasting, the point is still connection. Mm-hmm. The, the the point is still drawing yes. close to God and drawing near to Him. And so um, when we talk about the different kinds of fast or why we or when we may do fasting, um, remember, ultimately, the point is still connecting with God. You can't mess this up. Go confident with him. He's got you. Amen. Mm. 
Good Anything stuff. to add there, Tammy? Well, I'm, and hopefully this is right on, Thad, so you can stop me if I'm wrong, but I just think, you know, your control verse has been those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be satisfied, they'll be fulfilled. And you talked about the imputed righteousness that we have because of Jesus, the righteousness that we have in the sanctification process. But it feels like there's a third fold thing when you're talking about prayer and, and fasting, and that is we are hungering and thirsting for our righteous Savior, and, and then we get him in that those prayer and fasting times. So um, we are being satisfied on many layers, which is a beautiful Amen. thing. Amen. Well said. Amen. Thank well said. you. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us on this podcast. We will see you guys Sunday. Have a blessed week. Mm-hmm.